from a newspaper that's a failing newspaper called the New York Times. Failing. No, it's failing. And, you know, it's hard for me to say this, but they, they, yesterday they had three stories about me. One on a plaque that I put up this big on the Potomac River. They said, well, it didn't really say the right thing. They were saying it said something else than what happened in the Civil War. Somebody, some consultant said. So I said, really, were they there? Were they there? This was a front page story in the New York Times, okay, to show you where we've come. But I guess the day before yesterday, I had three stories. Yesterday I only had one that was an off day. Never a good story. Editorials, oh, that are so bad. They, they, you and I believe the same things. They don't agree with us, okay? But here, listen to these statistics. So the New York Times, which is in huge financial difficulty, which won't make it, somebody will come along, some rich guy, maybe I'll do it. <laughs> Now, some rich guy, some rich guy that wants to be relevant, that, you know, is rich, but nobody ever heard of him, and he can't get a place in a restaurant. A lot of those guys, I have a lot of friends, they call me, they say, Don, they're worth two, three billion dollars. Don, could you do me a favor? Could you get me a, a place in a restaurant? I said, which restaurant? Uh, this one. I said, you know, what's the good of being rich if you can't get a reservation in a restaurant? Isn't it true, though? He said, uh, you're right, uh, can you get me the place? So I get him. I always get people. I like doing that. Then they say, why do you work so hard? I say, because I like getting good restaurant tables, I guess. But look at the New York Times. So here are some statistics, here are some numbers. Because I took a lot of heat about a reporter who changed the story after 14 years. A reporter that says, I know him, I don't know him. I mean, I may have met him. Some of the people back there, they report me every day. I don't know who they are, I don't know what they look like, but I know their name. And they know what I'm talking about. I know their name. And some treat me good and some treat me badly, mostly badly because, you know, they don't, like, they don't come from where we come from. But, but I know their name, but I don't know. So I took a lot of heat, but before I get to it, because this reporter works for the New York Times now, he used to work for the Washington Post, and this reporter was so happy. People have heard of him now. Nobody ever heard of the guy. Now people have so he's having such a good time. So what happens is this. The New York Times, had a cathedral, one of the great cathedrals in all of the newspaper world. Nothing like it. 229 West 43rd Street, right off Broadway. I used to go in there when I was young, because I've been doing this stuff for a long time, believe me. It's time now for us to do something else, make America great again. It's time for us to, right? Time for us, right? Time for us to do something else. But 229 West 43rd Street. So the New York Times, takes this unbelievable place. And they've had it for years, from probably the inception. And you walked in, and here you were. You were in this. So important. Believe me, so important. And the marble, the everything. You couldn't build it. And you'd see pictures of the publishers and the editors from many, many years ago, when it was first started. The original founders, the people that made it great. Now it's going down the tubes fast. But the real people that made it great. And you'd say, wow. It was intimidating, I'm telling you. You'd have a meeting with the editorial board in those editorial rooms. It was really something special. It was special. Does that make sense to you? Do you know what I'm talking about? So they took that building and they sold it for $175 million to guys that I know very well, real estate guys, pros. They flipped it, listen to this, in a short period of time for $525 million. So think of it. So the New York Times takes this unbelievable bill, and you know one of the reasons they did that? Because they bought the Boston Globe and they needed more space. But the Boston Globe was one of the worst investments of all time. They bought the Boston Globe for $1.1 billion. They lost tremendous amounts of money over a period of years, tremendous, it was hemorrhaging. They spent a fortune, hundreds of millions of dollars, on new computers, everything. They spent a fortune. So they paid 1.1 billion. They lost a fortune during a long period of time that they owned. And they sold it for 70 million bucks, and I think the 70 is probably a dollar. I mean, they reported 70, but I have a feeling it's a lot less than 70, because I know the people that bought it, and they're very smart. They're not even going to pay 70. These are the people that are writing editorials, criticizing me and you and everybody that believes like we believe. These are the people. These people don't have it. 
Now, you won't see that probably on television because everyone sticks up, you know, the media sticks up for the media. See, you're not going to see it. And who else is going to take up the New York Times? I don't care. I don't care. It's, I always say the failing New York Times, it'll probably be out of business pretty soon because it can't lose the money. With the unfunded liabilities that they have, I don't think they even have any value. But somebody's always around to buy something nowadays. Of course, if times get really bad, and they're bad now if you're looking for jobs and things, that we all know. But if times get really bad, you're going to see it close.